probably wants to take another step, but can you talk about that room as a whole, what Jalen means to it, and what Jaden adds to it in particular? Yeah, I've been really encouraged by that room during fall camp. Um, you know, Jalen's leadership ability, obviously he's been out there for a lot of reps. Uh, he's the type of person that you want to follow. Comes to work every day. He's great to be around. He's great in the locker room. Um, and, and, and providing that not only in that room, but for the offense and the team at large um, has, has been something that we've been able to lean on. Adding Jaden to that room, he's also got a little bit of that just connector ability uh, in the room, on the offense, on the team in general. Uh, pe people enjoy being around him, so, so that's been fun. And then you've seen, you've honestly seen guys step up. Uh, Dimitri, uh, who had a, a role for us last year, but you've seen him step up in camp, make some big plays. Uh, you've seen the same thing out of Daniel Jackson. I've liked his camp what he's brought to the table. I mean, he's been consistent. We've, we've had, you know, we're at practice 12, practice 13 now. And uh, man, that guy's been as consistent as anybody just coming out there working each day. So I, I've been excited about where that room is at and, and what they've been doing. And, you know, really excited to see them uh, going into uh, obviously this Saturday, have another great opportunity to get back out on the, the, the game field and make plays. You talk about Cartavius and, and um... Eli, a little bit, please. Yeah, those guys are, you know, I, I told him the other day, I, I feel like they feel like veterans, even though, you know, Cartavis has been here a year. Um, Eli, obviously, like, he's, he's still got years left in the program. And so, uh, but the way that they've carried themselves, they, they've they felt like veterans. You know, guys who, um, man, they, they know all the dimensions of playing running back, running the ball, catching the ball in the backfield, picking up things and pass protection. So, uh, the, again, Eli, I, I would say coming out of the spring, Eli had about as consistent of a 15-day spring practice as any running back uh, that I've been around, just as far as knowing exactly what to do, knowing what we're expecting out of uh, each play. Um, and, and I think he's really built on that going into the fall. Uh, obviously, he's got big play ability, uh, which, which you know, anytime uh, you got a running back like that and you get a, give him a crease, uh, he can make something happen in a hurry. And then Cartavis, again, he didn't have the opportunities in the spring. And, and again, you kind of look at his his – since he's been here, he's, he's kind of got stopped up at times just de dealing with some injuries. And so, again, to have 12 straight practices where that guy's been out there full steam ahead, um, you know, I, I, I really feel like it's built a good foundation for him going into this fall. And, uh, man, again, he, he provides a lot, man. He's, he's a big, powerful back who does have big playability, can catch the ball out of the backfield. It's really good in pass protection. So, again, th those guys being able to um, obviously complement each other, um, but, but you don't feel like there's, there's a part of their game that they can't uh, take on as they're out there on the field. And the three newcomers, if you will. Yeah, you know, um, AJ, again, we, we, you know, he had an injury in the spring, so we didn't get to see him until really that last week and felt encouraged by the way that he finished up spring. Um, and then, and then again, he's done a, he's done a great job. Like his, his ability to play with low pad level, his ability to run through contact, he's a physical back. Um, and, and I've really appreciated his physicality throughout fall camp. And then our two young, young running backs who have made a ton of plays in camp, um, you know, they're, they're, they're dynamic playmakers, you know, and, and Abu has had some runs that have been uh, pretty darn incredible throughout camp. And, you know, I would say the same about Carson. You know, I, I feel like Carson's transition has been interesting. You, you know, when you play in a style offense, if you go back and watch this high school tape, you know, playing in a wing T style offense, uh, it usually takes guys – a while to adjust to different schemes, different run schemes. Um, but that guy is like, he's got a good feel for running the ball, man. He can, he can feel the second level. Um, you know, he can make guys miss, he can lower his pads. So those young dudes are uh, both talented and mature enough to handle what we've thrown at them, which, um, you know, it, it encourages you obviously as a, as a coach to see not only where they're at right now, but obviously their long-term development. Just wanted to give you an opportunity to name a starting quarterback. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take it as soon as Coach Campbell does it. You know, as soon as he does it, uh, I'll, I'll follow suit. But, you know, th those guys have been working really hard. Um, we've put them in a lot of different situations in camp, which I think is really important um, to see them operate in two-minute drills, to see them operate on third downs um, in different spots of the, on the field. Uh, those guys have done a really good job of, I, I think, learning and growing from each rep. Um, you know, I, I think they've been students of the game, not only in the summer and, and preparing themselves for fall camp, but all the way through fall camp. And just, just trying to soak up each rep, trying to soak up each rep that they're out there, as well as somebody else getting rep and finding ways to learn and grow. And so, um, 
I've been really fired up to be working with them. They're they're fired up about just being in this building every day and getting on the field and growing and learning and and you know that's 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 the type of guys you want to be around. You know it's it's, it's unique. Uh, yeah, again, you talk about those running backs, and I say, man, they're, they're the older guys, they're the veteran guys, and um, obviously, man, we we haven't had one of those guys in our building longer than shoot Rocco's been here just over a year. Uh, but but the way that they've carried themselves has has made you feel like that, and I think made the offense and the team in general feel like that. And so, um, yeah, those, those guys have come to work uh, each day with a with a great mindset and a great mentality, just to learn and grow. For Rocco and JJ, the the physical attributes are pretty different, just I guess from height. What does that inform that competition, or what you can do with each one of them, or how does that just fit into the puzzle that you're? Put yeah, you know, I, I, I was thinking about it as, as we've gone throughout camp. You don't feel like uh, there's there's a giant difference in in what maybe you know the, the play style or what somebody does. Obviously, they they look a whole lot different, but um, as far as their ability on the field, they they both done a pretty good job of you know when when we're playing fast and spreading things out. Um, you know. Again, Randy, at times when they're under center, um, you know, when, when, when they're having to put themselves into, into different, um, you know, different schemes within the offense, I think that they've done a good job. I don't feel like there's something that, man, one guy can do and one guy can't do, um, which, which is encouraging. You know, I, I think you want to as much as you can. Um, you, you're trying to form the offense around your, your players and the playmakers you have. And, and that can be challenging at times if you've got quarterbacks that are really different. Um, but, man, I, again, I think that those guys have, have handled everything. We've thrown out of them really well. Coach, how good is your depth and thus competition in the tight end room? It's, it's good, man. It's, it's been competitive. Uh, those guys, uh, again, we, we've always said it, us at our best is having guys that – uh, we can put into different spots, and they can be playmakers, uh, both in the run game and the pass game. And those guys provide a different element for us. And and again, seeing some of those young guys step up to the to the plate again, Gay Burkle probably had one of the best springs that that you know any of those guys had had. And uh, you know the veteranness of Easton Dean, you feel like that's a guy that can literally do it all. Um, man, he's a guy that can. I mean. You put him in front of a board and have him draw up every run scheme we have. He knows that every pass scheme we have, he knows it. And so uh, having a guy like that in the room that's able to bring uh, a lot to the table, man, Tyler Moore, seeing him, he, you know, I feel like spring we missed out on having opportunities to see him. Getting him back and getting him into the fold has been really, really good. That's a guy that's been waiting for an opportunity, and you could tell he, he's been attacking camp and attacking every opportunity he's gotten. So uh, when you've got guys like that, they – they're different because, man, them in the game, man, are you are you going to be pass heavy? Are you going to be run heavy? Uh, it, it's kind of hard to predict with those guys just because of what they're able to do. Last season, the the rushing average of whatever that was, 108.0 yards or, or something like that was very not good. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that was mostly on because of injuries. But but what what did you see last year, and, and, and how does this team improve that from last year, and I don't know if there's a way anybody can stay injury free, but sure. But what about those injuries last year, and what about them cropping up again this year? Yeah, no injuries are tough, and you know anytime you're going to deal with that uh, at, at a specific position, um, man, you, you can take a hit at times. You can take a hit at times, pass game, run game, just depending on uh, guys that you may lose during the season. So you got to be able to adjust. That being said, uh, I do feel encouraged about the depth at, at multiple positions. Again, you talk about the tight ends, you talk about the running back room, you talk about the O line room, and having depth there makes you feel like you can be consistent. Um, you know, especially in the run game, regardless of who is out there. Um, again, it might look a little different, might look a little different in the run game with with who you got out there and what they do best. Uh, but at the same time, um, I, I do feel like we're in a better spot from a depth standpoint. I do feel like the, the, the work that those guys have put in. I think where our offensive line is at as well, uh, it, it helps bring that consistency week in and week out that we feel like, man, um, those guys can attack defenses in different ways and they can feel confident regardless of the looks that they're seeing that they can go and create scenes for, for guys to run behind regardless of who's back there behind them with the ball. I'm switching gears a whole bit. Yep, a bunch here. Um, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, whenever it was, three years ago maybe, um, what was your initial reaction when the it became evident 
that TJ Tampa, one of your receivers, was going to play running back, or was going to was going to be a defensive back, and how'd those conversations go, and how'd that conversation go with you and and his father? Sure, uh, you know TJ just spoke to the team the other night, and it was cool to hear him reflect back on uh, just his journey here. And I mean, he he took it all the way back to when he showed up here, and you know he was just on an unofficial visit. His flight gets canceled. He ends up going to our camp. He's playing receiver, making plays. Uh, he flips over on DB and he's making some plays there. And, and you know, I, I remember talking to him and his dad, even in the spring going into, um, you know, his career here. And he had just, he played on both sides. He was playing seven on seven and had kind of been on both sides of the ball. And I knew, I knew two things about TJ. Number one, that he was going to work uh, his tail off to go and be the best version of himself. And he didn't really have a, it's got to look like this. It's got to be this. I've got to. I got to be a receiver and run these routes. I've got to play this position and, and do this. Um, that that never really was at the forefront of his mind. He was just. He felt like he had a lot of potential. Wanted to be in the right program, right environment to go and um, experience that potential in the best way. And so you, you knew he came in with that mentality. And then number two, when he got here, you felt like this guy is about team. Like as much as anything, as much as he's a. Man, he's a highly rated player coming out of high school. He's he's got offers. He's got people banging at his door at the end, um, you know, on signing day. Uh, he gets here and he's and he's now at this point where man, he's he's got scouts in here every day that are watching him and, and thinking that he can go on to the next level and have success. The guy's been about team since I've been around him. And so honestly, those conversations were man, you you guys know, but I remember talking to Mark, his dad, and saying like. Hey, you guys are more of experts than me. Um, and, and Mark, his dad, he's like a big time basketball guy. And so he's like, if I was telling them, you know, what to do in basketball, I'd be able to have the best opinion. But you guys are, are the coaches. You guys are the experts. And so he had great trust um, in, in us as, as developers and us as like seeing him and his potential and where it could go. And so it, it was one of those conversations. I think we all knew that it was best. Uh, for him, for the team, and I, I don't think he ever flinched. Um, you know, I think I tried to steal him back a couple of reps just to get him on the jump ball now and again. But uh, he, he's obviously, you know, he, he's the type of person that that you want to build this program on, and and you know, he, he's taking everything that we've we've put in front of him. And, and yeah, yeah, no, there was a lot of late night conversations with the uh, Tampa's um, that that last week. You know. TJ didn't sign right on signing day because of all that. And so I remember uh, being on the phone with him early in the morning on signing day. Um, you know, he, he was on East Coast time. I remember honestly calling them and not getting a hold of them and just being like, oh, Lord, what, what's, what's going on right now? Um, but but truthfully, it there, there was a lot for him. You know, TJ grew up in Georgia. There, there was a lot of allure to that. And and so I think he, at the, at the end of the day, um, throughout a three day span of conversations uh, in, in which he never really felt like he was, he was like, Hey coach, I don't know if this is bad. like the whole time. He's like, man, I, I just want to make sure, you know, I, I didn't expect this and I had my mind set on one thing and then this showed up and I, I just want to be sure. And, and uh, yeah, at, at, at the end of the day, he's, he's who he is. He's confident in himself. He's confident in putting himself in the right position, being around the right people. And uh, we're grateful for him and his family for believing in us. What has it been like for you to work with a great offensive line coach like Ryan Clinton, and what has he really brought to this room, uh, especially with the veterans and the underclassmen as well? Yeah, I enjoy working with Coach Clinton. Um, you know, I enjoy him as a person, him as a coach. Uh, I enjoy the playlist that he brings to the offensive staff room. Good playlist guy on Spotify. You know, he, he, he's got certain feels for the day of, of what we need in that staff room. So, um, but in all honesty, he's he, he works really hard to be – uh, an expert of his craft and you appreciate working with people like that you appreciate people who uh, care about not only their group but but the team in general uh, you know I, I think he's a person that yeah the offensive line has gravitated towards him but again pe people just respect that that man he's he's in it for more than just man somebody being a really good football player he, he wants to develop them as men and when you got that kind of authenticity um, the, the, those are the type of coaches that you want to be around. So, I've, again, it's been great working with him. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that journey with him as we get into the season. Um, but, but, yeah, he's, he's a heck of a coach, and he's made a heck of an impact. I wanted to piggyback off that a little bit, and then I also had another question just real quick. Yeah, um, I got time. 
you've, you've got two or three guys coming back, starters on that offensive line. Who are some of the younger ones that are really pushing maybe for those other one spots and then maybe filling out that two deep? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a – you can – each day I feel like we walk off the field and there are different offensive linemen who end up being the standouts of practice, which is, which is unique. And those guys can be older guys that, that you feel like are, man, really coming along. Uh, Grant Triver, for example, um, man, has had a really good and consistent camp. Uh, man, Jared Hufford, there's days where it feels like, man, that guy is, is man, as good as we've been around. Um, man, there's days where the, a guy like Dalen Hazer has a, has a day where, man, he's consistent, he steps up, he, he's, um, you know, he's, he's locked in in critical moments, knows what to expect. He's anticipating what's going on in front of him. Uh, and, and, and honestly, he's got some physical tools that he's able to dominate at the point of attack. Again, the, the, the same thing. you got a young guy like Jim Boniface who has, has made a lot of plays, who's done a great job. Brady Peterson, who's been consistent throughout. Um, and, and so, man, you could go person by person, uh, Tyler Miller, James Neal, Daryl Simmons, and you feel like there's been a day, there's been two days where those guys have been, man, you would say the, the top one or two. Um, so, so that makes it unique, and it, and it makes it challenging on us to figure out exactly uh, what, who works best together, who works best as, as all five of those guys up front. Um, but you enjoy that challenge as a coach because you, you don't feel like you're just trying to search and find guys, man, can we find anybody who can go in there and play that spot? No, you, you feel like it's more of, man, who – and I think these guys can do it. Who's going to be the best five? Who's going to work the best next to each other? Uh, which, again, that's, that's been a great part of fall camp and seeing those guys' development. And then as, back to the tight end group. Ben Bramer was not – I don't think he's one you mentioned, but his name has come up a lot this preseason. He wasn't here for spring ball. What's kind of, when he arrived, what's kind of allowed him to make such a, a quick impact in camp? Yeah, that was not a knock on Ben Bramer not mentioning him. Um, and, and outside of his physical traits, I would say, like, that guy has just been fun to work with. He's a worker. He comes in every day, and you feel like he grows. He's, he's willing – again, very rarely do you get a tight end that's willing to be – physical at the point of attack that that man there's a lot that we ask those tight ends to do that they're able to pick up on it from a mental side and that guy's done a great job with that again it's a it's a challenging position to play as a freshman and it, the way that he's worked um it's allowed him the ability that that man we we for sure can consider that but um man i'm really encouraged with him again you, you can tell that like he's a coach's son um, the way that his dad worked with him and taught him, like he's been a part of great football programs, championship programs. And so he, he has one way to go about his business, and, and it's, it's been fun to see. Um, you know, and, and again, that's the same thing I said about a lot of those freshmen. They got, they, there's some of those guys that have that kind of trait in them and that they just, man, they, they come in here and they're green and they're young. Uh, but they've worked and they've, they've made um, huge strides in the last couple of weeks. And so we're excited to see that development. Again, for, for young guys, that development can come at different times. Man, they, they might be ready week one, two of the season in your non-conference. It might be midway through the year that, that those guys end up being guys that, that end up rising and having roles on the team. You know, we've seen that with our guys, you know, throughout the year, some of the best ones that, man, it happens at different moments, but uh, you can kind of see some of those traits that they, you realize they got the ability to impact.